Hello, this is John Kanalopoulos from our office here in Athens, Greece. Our favorite subject, keratoconus, and we're seeing here a transplant on a lady that was done elsewhere. Um, we can kind of see a decimates fold here on the donor tissue. Unfortunately for this lady, this is a great graft. Uh, we'll see the cell counts in a little bit. Um, is uh, still not uh, feeling the benefit of the cornea transplantation 10 years later. We'll, we'll jump into looking what her right eye, her other eye looks like today. And the keratoconus present here is obvious. There's not much epithelial remodeling, kind of confirming the age this lady is 52 and consider, and we consider keratoconus with such a mild epithelial remodeling inactive at this point, but of course time and uh, OCT maps here with the OptiView Avanti will be the most, uh, uh, the most sincere uh, representation of the cone here. So the keratoconus on the other eye, we assume was severe enough for her to undergo a transplant. In the right eye that we saw here, let's go back to that picture. She is with a minus four and a half, minus 375 at 65 degrees, 2020. And that's her good eye. She uses spectacles, she's contact lens intolerant. With her left eye, seen here, she's wearing a minus four, minus 425 at 160 degrees, and she's only 2070. She cannot tolerate a higher cylindrical correction. Uh, we, of course, uh, measured this eye with sign fluke tomography, and we can see the reason why. We have very significant astigmatism, 10 diopters on the pentacam. Uh, we see there's not much going uh, Posterior-wise, we can also see that the margins of the graft are in good opposition with the host. So there's no significant thinning anywhere to justify the significant astigmatism. We have described to you in uh, separate videos that if this was a graft host dehiscence, we would suture and cross-link that dehiscence in order to correct the astigmatism. The axis of the astigmatism and the fact that the cornea thickness is very good at the perimetry of the graft, and we're confirming the suspicious area at the six o'clock that it, there's good opposition here of the um, graft and the host uh, throughout. Um, and uh, thus, we're going to attempt laser vision correction on this cornea transplant. And we did the, the uh, uh, course for the American Academy for over 15 years. Uh, how do you tackle, though, a refraction of minus 125, minus 775 at 130 degrees? We saw the topographic astigmatism was 10 diopters. Refractive-wise, she's close to 8. No laser can treat that. And we thought about it. We sat down, we looked at the cornea thickness, and we came up with an idea. This is basically the essence of what I want to share with you today. We opted to perform two laser procedures. The first procedure is a hyperopic astigmatic procedure. So we treated plus one, arbitrary plus one, minus 175 at 30 degrees. And you can see the treatment plan here with the X500 eczema laser. This is a PRK treatment with epithelium removed with the Orca EBK device. And then our number two treatment, minus 225, minus six, 130. Now adding these two gives us the total refraction noted. And this is the second treatment. So immediately after the first PRK, hyperopic PRK treatment, myopic astigmatism here, treating minus 225, minus 6, 130 degrees. Of course, cyclorotation engaged here with the X500 eczema laser. We had good iris recognition data. And uh, uh, confirmatory here, uh, we're looking at the lens star numbers for this patient, uh, um, a uh, pretty much a metropic uh, actual length good cornea thickness and uh, good chamber depth. And you can also see the 10 doctors of astigmatism that the patient had pre-op, even on the lens star. So uh, the cell count here, a uh, little bit frugal with measuring these cells. Uh, a lot of cells were skipped. So I consider this, there is some polymegathism close to a thousand for 10 years later, a thousand cells per centimeter, per millimeter square rather is a very good uh, ECD. And this is our patient uh, today. It is uh, about six months after the procedure. The cornea is crystal clear. Um, and the good news is that she is uncorrected 2025. Uncorrected 2025. I want to repeat this. I'll show you why the two sequential PRK treatments were able to make the cornea convert from here to here. And the difference map is a testament of the accuracy with the delivery 
uh, with this system, the X500 Eczema Laser with Sacro Rotation Adjustment, you can see that the difference map from before and today mirrors the actual preoperative astigmatism. So this is the level of accuracy that our eczema lasers have reached and the tremendous therapeutic benefit they can offer to these patients. Um, we're going to finish by looking at the uh, OCT maps uh, prior to our um, double PRK with the ORCA EBK and uh, today, uh, good cornea thickness. Uh, this is about a 440, 450 on Pentacam. The uh, OptiV OCT is a little bit underestimating that and we've reported on this before. Very good epithelization here. Uh, thus, uh, a very happy patient. And you guessed it right. What was the first thing that she told me after she greeted me today? Dr. Kenalopoulos, when can I have laser in my other right eye? since my left eye uh, is so great after your miraculous team work. And of course, we're gonna employ the Athens protocol here to treat her uh, uh, irregular keratoconic astigmatism, but we'll probably employ half of the CXL energy that we usually use instead of uh, six joules, we'll use three joules. As at 52 years of age, we feel that there's very little potential for ectasia and thus, uh, uh, we're going to treat the other eye and hopefully have this lady walk around as an emetrope and 10 years later make this beautiful graft something very helpful for her everyday life. I hope you found uh, this presentation interesting. This is John Kenlopoulos signing out with uh, some of the most beautiful images we see here during our day. Thanks so much for your attention.